Hello everyone. So, so far we've seen only one technique of integration, which is called substitution. But that's not enough. Not all integrals can be evaluated using substitution. So we, ne we need to uh, know more techniques. So what we'll do in this video is study a second technique, which is called integration by parts. So let me start by motivating what this is all about. All right, so if we start with a very simple integral of sine of x dx, then I'm sure you all know right away what the answer is. This is just minus cos of x plus a constant of integration. Okay, let's do something slightly more complicated. If I write down the integral of x sine of x squared dx, this is an integral that we can evaluate using substitution. We would set u equals to x squared du equals 2x dx. The integral, integral would become 1 half integral of sine of u du which we can integrate then, and we get 1 minus 1 half cos of u, but u is x squared, so I get cos of x squared plus a constant of integration. Now the key here is to realize that I needed to use substitution to evaluate this integral, and the reason is because if I take the derivative of my antiderivative to get back the integrand, well, this is a function of a function, so I need to use the chain rule. So this is what I said when I introduced substitution, the point here is that substitution undoes the chain rule. All right, that's cool. Now let's look at something slightly more complicated. Suppose that I write down the integral of x sine of x dx. How can we integrate that? Well, you may want to try as much as you'd like to use substitution to evaluate this integral. It's not going to work. You'll need something more. What you could do is just guess the answer. If you're clever enough, you might be able to guess it. But it's not so obvious. Now, I know the answer, so I can guess it. And it turns out that if I write down the function f of x equals to minus x cos of x plus sine of x plus a constant, then this is the result of integration here. How do I know that? Well, we can check it. Once we have a guess, we can check it. We just calculate the derivative. So f prime of x here. Well, first I get two terms coming from the first one because I have to use the product rule. So I get minus cos of x plus x sine of x plus the derivative of sine of x, which is cos of x. And these two terms cancel. What remains is indeed the integrand. So this is the general antiderivative of x sine of x. But how can I actually have a technique to be able to get this without just guessing, right? It's hard to guess the answer. So in this case, I knew the answer, but if you don't know it, there's no way you can guess the answer just looking at it. So how can I get that? Now, the key is to realize that uh, I could not use substitution here. I need something more, and the reason is because if I take the derivative of the antiderivative, well, I didn't need to use the chain rule here, but I needed to use the product rule because of the first term. And this is exactly what integration by parts will be doing for us. So integration by parts, is a technique of integration that undoes the product rule. Just as substitution undoes the chain rule, integration by parts undoes the product rule. And in fact, for any differentiation rule, there is a corresponding integration technique. Okay, so let me now explain what uh, integration by parts is. So we're gonna start with the product rule because this is what we want to undo with integration by parts. So if I start with the product of two functions of x, which I will call u and v, and take the derivative, well, using the product rule, what I get is u dv dx plus v du dx. Now what I can do is integrate both sides of the equation from, say, a to b. So on the left-hand side, I get the integral from a to b of d dx u v times dx, so it's equal to the integral from a to b of u dv dx times dx plus the integral from a to b of v du dx times dx. Okay, now what I can do on the left-hand side uh, is to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the integral of a derivative. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, what I get is just the thing inside the derivative evaluated between a and b. So I get u v between a and b, which is equal to, I'm just going to rewrite the right-hand side in a slightly better way, I'm just going to cancel the dx, which is really just using differentials. So this is the integral of u dv plus the integral from a to b of v du. 
And then the last step to state integration bypass is just to shuffle things around, bring that, uh, bring this one on the left hand side, and then exchange the two sides to get the following statement, which is that the integral from a to b of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral a to b of v dv. And this is the statement of integration by parts. It relates the integral of u dv to the integral of v du and to u and v. Now, uh, I've formulated everything here in terms of definite integrals. Now, in the textbook and in most references, it will be formulated in terms of indefinite integrals. So the statement you will see is the following. This is the exact same statement, but uh, without the, the uh, limits of integration here. That's fine. The only tricky thing is that you have to remember that the integrals, the indefinite integrals, are only defined up to a constant of integration. So once you integrate, you have to add up the constant. But that's perfectly fine if you keep that in mind. Okay, so that's really nice. But how can we actually use that uh, to evaluate integrals? How can we use that, for example, to evaluate the integral of x sine of x dx? So this is what I want to do next. Okay, so remember that integration by parts says that the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus integral of v d. How can I use that to evaluate an integral like this? Well, the first step is to pick two functions, or rather a function u and a differential dv, such that first, well, u dv is what I want to evaluate. Right, so this is the thing I'm trying to evaluate. But also, and this is the challenge, I want to pick u and dv such that on the other side, the integral of v du is simpler than my original integral u dv. Right? So if it is simpler, then I might actually be able to evaluate it, and then I can get the answer. If it is more complicated, then it's just not useful. So there's a challenge in using integration by parts because it's, it's not given to you what u and v are. You have to find out which one will work. And generally speaking, there's many choices. So my advice, at least at first, is to write down all the possible choices and then figure out which one works. Which one works. As you do many problems, you'll, you'll have an intuition and then you'll probably be faster. But at first, it's good to just write down everything. So we'll do that first. And then we'll see, uh, we'll come up with a sort of rule of thumb of what choice should work in general. Okay, so now I want to uh, write this as the integral of u dv. So here's the four natural choices that I could make. Could take u, my function u, to be just 1, and dv to be equal to the whole thing, x sine of x dx. So there's a dx here in the dv because that's a differential. Here this is just a function, so there's no dx. Now the other choice I could make is u is equal to x, dv is equal to sine of x dx. Could also choose u is equal to sine of x, dv is equal to x dx. Or I could choose u is equal to x sine of x and dv is equal to dx. Now, which one is the right choice? It's not obvious. So let's just try them out and see which one works. Well, first, the first one is not going to be useful. That's uh, easy to see. The reason is the following. So on the right-hand side, to write down the first time, I will need to integrate the differential dv right, to get v. But integrating dv, so integrating x sine of x dx, is actually what I'm trying to calculate. So that's not useful. I'm just trying, just rewriting things in terms of the same, same thing, right? So that's a useless cho choice. All right, so now let's do the second one and see if it works. So I'm going to write it down here. So I'm choosing u is equal to x and dv is equal to sine of x dx. To evaluate the right-hand side, I need to calculate both du and v. So du is the differential here, so I take the derivative times dx, so I just get 1 times dx, so dx, and v here is going to be the integral of this expression, so the integral of sine of x dx is just cos of x minus cos of x. So what I get, now I can plug that in the formula to evaluate the right-hand side, the first term is u times v, so it's minus x cos of x minus the integral of v du, which is v is minus cos of x to use dx. So I get minus x cos of x plus the integral of cos of x dx. But I know how to integrate cos of x. This is just sine of x. So I get plus sine of x plus my constant of integration. 
And if you remember the first slide, this was our guess, so it works. All right, so we know that the second choice works. What about the two other choices? Well, it turns out that they will not work. They will not be useful, so I'm not going to do the fourth one, but let me just show you that the third one is not useful. So if I were uh, making the, the third choice, I would take u to be sine of x, dv to be equal to x dx. We need to calculate du, which would be cos of x dx, and v is the integral of x dx, which is x squared over 2. If I were plugging that in the formula for integration by parts, uv would give me x squared over 2 sine of x, minus the integral of v du, which would be x squared over 2 times cos of x dx. And now you see what happens. The problem is that the integral on the right-hand side is actually more complicated than my original integral. So that's useless. I mean, that's not wrong. This is right. Uh, this is correct statement, but it's a useless statement. You cannot use this particular choice of u and v to evaluate this integral using integration by parts. So this is not good. And in fact, the fourth one is also not good. So in this case, this was the right choice. Now, the rule of thumb for choosing u and v appropriately is to choose dv as being the most complicated part of the integrand times dx, such that you can integrate it mentally. So to calculate the right-hand side, you need to calculate v, so you need to be able to integrate dv. And the rule of thumb is that you should choose it to be as complicated as possible, but such that you can do it in your head. If you cannot do the integral in your head, then it's probably too complicated. And if you choose it to be too simple, if you choose dv to be too simple, then that might not be useful. So that's a general rule of thumb, but really it's not always obvious which one is the right choice. So my advice is to just try many of them. If the first one doesn't work, don't give up. Try the next one, and at some point it will work. All right, so let me just summarize what we've seen. Integration by parts is the statement that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. You will use that formula so many times that I'm sure by the end of the semester you'll know it by heart. What integration by parts does is undo uh, the product rule just as substitution undoes the chain rule. Now, to uh, use integration by parts to evaluate integrals, you need to pick uh, functions u and v, or u and a differential dv, such that the integral on the right-hand side is simpler than the integral on the left-hand side. This is a challenge, finding which, of the u, uh, which choice of u and dv is the right one. The rule of thumb is to let dv be the most complicated part of the integrand times the differential, such that you can integrate it mentally. And the first option you try may not work. Don't give up. Try many, try as many options as you need. And the more you do it, the more you will be at getting an intuition of what choices of u and dv will be the right one. So there's no way out. You just need to practice a lot of problems. And we will do many problems in class.